Hi everyone, MM0 EFI. Welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm going to answer a few questions today about Laura. Now, don't worry, this isn't turning into a Laura channel, but I put a Laura video on um, just the other day and it's generated a lot of interest. Um, a lot of comments around, yeah, I want to find out more, how to set up an eye gate, how does it work? Um, I can't fathom it out, all that kind of stuff. So I will do another video in the future. Now I try to keep my videos non-technical, so when I do a video, I will try and explain in layman's terms how it all works. So, um, but one comment which was really uh, struck home with me, uh, M0BOB Robert. Now don't take this the wrong way because I totally understand the reason for his question. It was like, what is the point of Laura um, you know, is it a waste of time? Because in the past I've put an eye gate up, I tried sending messages, didn't get any response. Uh, when I looked up um, M0BOB Robert on uh, QRZ, he lives, um, I think, Essex, East End of London way. And um, I certainly know when the Mesh Tastic, you know, the 800 megahertz license free thing was kicking off, one of the YouTubers down that way was doing a lot of stuff on it. Um, so I don't know if that was, you know, a fad that's maybe passed, but it feels to me that the uh, 70 centimeter Laura stuff is starting to pick up um, with amateurs, and um, particularly in the in the SOTA fraternity, because obviously tracking and hilltops and all that kind of stuff works really well. But I've just been up there servicing, not servicing. I promised myself I would I would check on my Digi Peter once a week, no matter what the weather and uh, you'll see it was quite breezy up there today. And uh, it, it, it helps me get some exercise and I do think I feel responsible for checking the physical condition of the, um, the system every week as well. I should really set up a webcam, shouldn't I, and save me the walk. So, why, why do I do it? Well, Robert, I understand where you're coming from because you're talking to someone who set up a two meter APRS full digipeter about five years ago. I had to get a license for it, a notice of variation. I had to learn how to work Raspberry Pis, Linux, loads of bits and pieces, and hardly anyone uses it um, apart from me. But it was the, the, the learning and the construction and all that kind of thing that I found really interesting. And that's what I find interesting with LoRa as well. It's a, it's a different technology. I've had to learn about it. Um, you know, setting up the eye gate was good fun, dead simple. You know, you're setting up a, a, a firmware, you're flashing that, then you're amending a con configuration fire. You can build an antenna. You know, all this kind of stuff that amateur radio people do. Then obviously the digipeter on the hill has taken it to a different level, a more commitment, but I've got time now uh, to, to commit to that. So, what does it look like in the future? Well, Laura for me, I'm only really just starting out. We've got a network of friends around Aberdeenshire that do SOTA, that have got or are getting trackers. That'll really let me see what the propagation's like. Again, another thing I'm interested in as a, an amateur, especially because it's 70 centimetres and really QQRP, it's 200 milliwatts. And it's amazing looking on the maps and on the applications to see where your packets can end up. I enjoy that side of it, and I've never really used 70 centimetres much as an amateur before. And then in the future, I really want to try and use it for messaging, for SOTA spotting. I've got a little keyboard that I think I can connect to it. I know that people who have iPhones can already send messages through APRS.fi and uh, APRS Droid, but um, I'm an Android user and don't have that luxury. So that might be another technical area that I have to look into. So, um, you know, if you're thinking about it, or in Robert's case, thinking about putting one back out again, do it, maybe share with your, uh, your friends, your amateur radio friends, how easy it is to, you know, to set one up and also how cheap. You're talking, I think, less than uh, 20 quid to put one up and you can make a, a dipole out of two bits of copper mains wire and it's only going to be uh, whew, breezy. Right, I'm going to get in the trees and finish this video off so you don't get killed by wind noise. 
Right, that's better. Where was I? Oh yeah, um, <clears throat> two bits of copper wire, one attached to the braid, one attached to the core of a bit of coax. It's going to be 35 centimetres long, just over a foot. There's a half wave dipole for, for uh, 70 centimetres that costs nothing. And remember, if it's a receive only eye gate, you know, you're not having to be too fanatical about trimming it to get the SWR down to one to one. It's going to pick up. So, experimentation, that's why I'm into it. And then, it's like a movement, isn't it? Once you've, once you've kind of done something and shared it with your friends, a few more of them get interested, then you can get a bit of a thing going and develop it from there. So that's what's happening with me. That's what's happening up here just now. So, thanks for your question, Robert. Yeah, it was really was thought provoking. So my next video is actually going to be a little bit of me uh, doing a bit of uh, service work up there on the hill and then explaining a little bit more about some of the uh, computer apps that I can use to monitor and uh, track what's happening with the Digipeter on the hill and really increase its functionality. So that's coming up. But in the meantime, if you haven't seen the first one, go back and have a look at that and let me know what you think. Seven three.